So when you want to start off with an eye, especially going from different angles, the main thing we want to think about is the eyeball itself, right? Eyes are spheres. And that's what you want to think about when you're drawing them from different angles, because your lids... If you've ever seen a piranha plant from Mario, think of your eyelids as the lips of the piranha plant, and it's going over your eye. Think of your eye as the inside of that. Your lids are what's closing around this eye. So we draw a few spheres for eyes, right? We think of this piranha plant method. Let's just draw one directly from the front. If the piranha plant's lips are going over the eye, then we'd have it closing by the quote unquote lips or your eyelids. And there should be a tear duct on one side, or there are two tear ducts, but one is shaped more like a C and the other is more like a V. Your upper lid always goes over top of your bottom lid. All right, from the side, if you were to take that piranha plant mouth, if I were to draw it kind of over here, it kind of ends in the middle of there, right? So same deal with an eye. You kind of have your eyelashes and your eyelid closing over the top, ends in the center here, and opens back up at the bottom. Don't forget your eyelashes. Your upper eyelashes up on the top of your eyes tend to be a lot thicker. You can kind of cross them over like this as well, almost like V's. I'll talk a bit about pupils in a second as well. Just know that pupils should not be drawn directly at the edge of the iris. They should be drawn farther back like this. Right, but again, they should keep this curve. This curve should always be kept. Right, keep that curve in there. You can almost have it like a V or an A off to the side there. And then the same thing if we have the piranha plant going from a third of the way. Eyelids, eyelashes always fan out, right? If you're doing something a little more realistic, generally you don't want your eyelashes to be like this. They tend to look a little bit nicer if you have them fanning out this way in multiple directions. And the next thing I want to talk about is these pupils. One thing that people don't always seem to get um, is that pupils do not actually sit directly on the ends of the eye. If you've never seen the anatomy of an eye before, your iris, or the colored part of your eye, goes a little bit away from the top of the eyeball, right? So it kind of, it rests on top of it. Think of an egg, right? When you hard boil an egg, you have the yolk that kind of sits on top of the white of the egg. That's kind of what your iris is like. And if that's the rest of the eyeball there. And your pupil, the black part of your eye, sits directly still on this area of your eye, like kind of directly on top of the quote unquote white of your eye because it's a, it's a hole, right? It's not like, it's what lets in the most light. When you are drawing any eye, doesn't matter what style it's in. And if it has a pupil in it, you gotta make sure the pupil does not rest directly on top of the iris, right? So if your eye is kind of from the side, this should always be curved as well because of our iris people in the back should be resting in the back as well. Once again, it is thinking of the piranha plant. If we think of the piranha plant from above, right, when we draw the eyes from above, the piranha plant's lips will kind of curve downwards like this. It'll look more like a smile when we draw it from above, right? So a piranha plant, when it goes downwards, it's the same deal with the eyes. When they're looking downwards, the eyes themselves. The eyes themselves should also be looking downwards, regardless of if they're happy or not. Should kind of be pointing downwards. Again, thin lashes on the bottom, thicker ones up top. But it's the same deal with your eyes. They will be curved upwards. Follow the curve of your sphere that you are drawing. Here's the second most requested thing that was on the poll, which was how to draw the other eye, right? And then you have to draw the other one and you're like, oh, gotta make it equal. Oh no, it's too small. I am, <laughs> right? And you're like, I don't get why this is happening. It's very simple. It's because you're drawing them not at the same time. Now the reason 
when you draw anything in pairs, this includes arms, this includes legs, this includes eyes, right? If they come in pairs, you draw them at the same time. What that means is that if you draw one lid, one upper lid of one eye, you draw the upper lid of the other eye as well, right? One piece of the eye at a time. If you draw the bottom lid, draw the bottom lid of the next eye as well. Draw the pupil. Well, this isn't the pupil. The iris, one eye, iris of the next. Pupil, pupil, eyebrow, eyebrow, and then your lashes. This rule tends to be broken with cartooning, um, but with realism, generally, the width of the face is five eyes long. And the space between both eyes is one eye length. But yeah, and if you didn't know, our growing community is filled with tons of art nerds and we art nerds have to stick together. Be sure to check out the links in our social media in the description below and check out our website for our class offerings because we're not just a YouTube channel, we are an art school. So if you'd like to kind of know how I do my eyes, right, for all of my characters, I tend to draw younger characters more often than not. So for me, I like to start with a very tall, eye like this. If you're drawing along, you can kind of draw with me. So I kind of have this upper lid. For the bottom lid, you see how most of the peak is not directly in the middle of the eye, right? It's a little bit skewed off to the side. That's the truth with regular eyes as well. I like to have this seeping into my stylized as well. So my peak on the bottom of my eye is on the opposite side. And again, I kind of like to stylize by adding a couple of extra lines underneath or my, my iris is a big oval. To distinguish between characters, this isn't realistic at all, but to distinguish between characters, I change the size of the pupil, right? And I like to make my pupils pretty big. Same size as the iris as well. I added a little hint of an eyelid sometimes up at the front. And then I give everybody perfect Instagram eyebrows. Doesn't matter who you are, I don't care. The eyebrow, the width of any of your eyebrows, generally there should be a peak two-thirds of the way of your eyebrow so it kind of goes up at two-thirds then it folds in a different direction so let me do an eye for how I would draw an older character almost the same deal as this and then my bottom lid mirrors that but it's a little bit smoother rather than like a point now it's a curve Sometimes I also add in the tear duct. That's actually with both of them. Sometimes I add the tear duct here too. Eyelid spans the entire thing. My pupils become circular as well, the older the character gets. If you're younger, you have an oval. If you're older, you have a circle. Same with the pupil. And then I start to add in under eye lids as well. Super, super cartoony. So I tend to have super, super big lids exaggerated lashes and then the bottom lid actually connects the eyelashes like this there's a lot of different ways you can color eyes I'm gonna start with how I color eyes and then afterwards I'll show you some more rendered ways that you can do eyes I'm just gonna color in the flats first <clears throat> your eyes should not be perfectly white same with teeth, same with anything else you draw. They shouldn't be perfectly white because your eyes, like nothing on your skin is perfectly white. So you can kind of make it a little bit yellower. The first thing that I always do is just kind of mess around with the pupil. I like to have half of it on top be a bit of a darker color. I just kind of pick the color of the eye, color in about half of it like that, leave a little bit on the bottom, then I add in a bit of a light. So I have a clipping mask, which you just click off this box, turn the layer into multiply, and then change the layer name. And then I usually choose kind of a, a blue, usually a light blue, and just add the shadows on top. Your upper lid is generally what causes shadows to the bottom of the eye. There's usually a little bit of shadow under your eyebrow as well, and on your under lid here. And then on my line art layer, this is where I use the bright white. 
And now I would just blend. So this is uh, subsurface scattering. And what that is, is basically just the shine of your, or the translucency of your skin peeking through. And all you need to do is just take your brush of choice and just blend it in. Another rule you should probably keep in mind for yourself is that your upper lid goes over top of your bottom one. So generally there will be more shadow on the underside of your lids. So another thing you'll probably notice me doing is that I am blending in my lines along with everything else. This is why I merge <laughs> everything on the single layer because I'm blending them all in now, including the lines. Another stylized thing that I see people do is have their eyelashes or their um, eyebrows be dark at the end and then get lighter as they go toward, like have it in a gradient. At this two third mark is where your um, eyebrow hairs change direction as well. So in this first two third section, they go this way. And then in this last third, they go this way. And then the last little thing that you can do is add highlights. I hit alt and then I blend. I hit alt and then I blend. I'm constantly picking between colors to smooth out. Tears are funky. Most of the time how I see people do it is you kind of have the shape of the tear that you want. Then you can kind of add in the shadow of whatever's underneath it. Leave a little bit of leeway around that shadow. Kind of blend in the edge of the tears as well and then you can add in your highlights on top of that another way that i've seen people do it is if you add in a track of darker color like this this is a little more realistic if you add in a track of darker color and then very very harshly add in a streak of light that. That's another way that I see people do it. When you're drawing eyes on people, if you have somebody's head, when they're facing directly forward, yes, you can have one eye and you can mirror it. Person looking straight forward, having the eyes both, and you just mirror them, that's totally okay. But if you are having a person who, who's facing off to the side, you cannot do that. Now, here's my one rule of thumb. So if I draw one eye, that's kind of facing off to the side, the other eye is not going to be the same width. So if I just take this eye and like, and move it over, you can't do that. <laughs> it looks a little bit weird. The height will remain the same, but your width will change. So this eye will be actually, will be thinner than this one, right? You notice that this eye is this width, this eye is this width. The eye that is farther away from you will be the one that is thinner. So let's draw a pair of eyes now. Check out our live stream replay, link in the description below. If you liked what you saw, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe so you never miss an upload. Join our community with the links down below if you'd like to support the channel in the creation of free arts education. Become a member on Patreon for working files, behind the scenes posts, and discounts on our class offerings. If you enjoyed this video, here's a couple other videos you can check out next.